before I start, okay, I'm Nalvin Joseph, I'm the CEO of Martin Dynamics. Uh, before I start, I just want to like put across one particular fact. I was just back from London yesterday, and in London, my entire baggage got stolen. So I lost my laptop, everything, including my presentation. So I don't have a presentation. Sorry about that. And the guys here at MEC was really, they really wanted me over, and I also really wanted to come over. So that's why I came without even a presentation. So sorry about that. Okay. And frankly, I didn't even have any idea what I was supposed to talk about. So, uh, as you said, I am currently working in the domain of artificial intelligence. See, uh, now, just want to clarify certain things because whenever I say artificial intelligence, as two people rightly put it, it's usually robotics which comes into the mind. You wouldn't believe because one time I had gone, gone to a college to give a talk and I asked them, so what do you think is that I do? And one student actually shouted, you make a terminator. So, I, I'm usually, you know, I don't know what to say about those things. See, when I started working in artificial intelligence, uh, I'll give you a brief history about what happened. Now, uh, I decided to work in the domain of artificial intelligence from when I was in my second grade. And yes, that was after watching Terminator 1. Now, unlike most people, I don't usually change my idea or change my uh, ambitions quite often. Yes, it does get changed, but not often. And what happened was, I did my uh, certificate or diploma in C when I was in my fourth grade, and that was the first time I entered into the subject of computer science. Now, from that point onwards, I was very interested in artificial intelligence, AI, especially because that was a dream I had. And one thing which I found very common was, everyone said it was something which was being studied or more research is required. I don't know why. Okay, this was always there. From right from when I was in my fourth grade to when I completed my engineering. My entire plan, my entire idea, my career was based on doing an MS, a master's in artificial intelligence and then yeah, joining somewhere or starting a company by myself. But fortunately, I won't call it unfortunately, fortunately, on the second last day of my exam, on, of my eighth semester exam, I had a bad accident and I could not write two of my exams. Thus, I cannot get my MS. So what I did was I went and started off the company anyway. So it was, there was nothing much to do. So I went and started off the company. Now, when I started off the company, it was very evident because even at that particular point, in 2008, April, that's when I started the company, in 2008, April, when I started, even then, when you search AI, it was wholly, it was about more research is being done into it, it is still not done. But what struck me was, see, AI, if you look at it, is not 100% accurate. You cannot get it at 100% accurate. You know, you will have to go to very high levels of exchange to get 100% accurate based AI methodologies. Now, what we, what we decided was, let's use what is available. Let's use simpler versions of AI and bring it onto people. See, right now, if you look at in India, India has just one course in the AI. And a lot of people have heard about AI, but most of them don't touch AI. They don't look at AI because they think, oh my god, that is like a crazy algorithm which the computer starts thinking and then they do all kinds of stuff. No, that is not AI. That is, no, okay, sorry, that is AI. But yeah, that is not what is being talked about here. What the first and foremost thing to bring people into this is we should bring AI into the masses. So that is exactly what the company's aim was. We decided to take AI, which is our core domain. We decided to take any irrelevant field, take some crazy field, combine those two, come out with a product which can be actually used, which can be used by somebody outside. And I don't mean some scientists in the ISRO labs, or I don't mean any kind of research facility, I don't mean any high-tech offices. We wanted something which can be used at your home, something which has AI. Thus, first aim being bring AI into the market. So what we did was, we now coming to what we have come up with. We all learn, or we all know that computers waste a lot of energy. The question is how, okay? Now, 
how many of you knew that even after you shut down your computer, it still takes power? Very few hands, I think. If you look at it, it takes somewhere between 6 to 26 watts. A computer which is off. And I'm not lying, it's very easily verified. But just because of this, and not only computers, I'm talking about all electronic equipment, everything. This particular loss, this is called the phantom power or vampire power or whatever it is. This particular loss accounts for 51% of the world's electricity losses. If you leave your fan on, that is an energy which is wasted because the fan is on and it is wasting power. If you shut down your computer, it is losing power because even when it is not, it's not working. That particular power, that is a power which is wasted when the equipment are not in use, accounts for 51 percentage. And in this 51 percentage, 26 percentage goes to computers. Now that is a lot of power. Okay, for technical people, I can give you a very very simple estimate. Thousand computers in a year, if in its off condition, would waste 88 megawatt hour. If technical people would get an idea about what this figure is. This is just enough, this is the energy which is required for a small village. Now this is the amount of electricity we are talking about. Now what we decided was, and moreover, if you look at it, right now I can ask two questions very simply. You all have you know, probably you know, the pitches usually towards companies, so I find it very hard to put across a pitch here. But anyway, you all have labs in your colleges. How many of you actually shut down your computer when you come out? Unless and until this made companies and the, the supervisor comes behind you with a stick or something. No, sticks doesn't work now, it's something else. I'm pretty sure, okay, I never used to do it. Anyway, so when the sales pitch is made towards a company, you ask, in your office, do you turn off your machine? And he says, no, I don't. It's very simple. The study says that 60% of the people in an office architecture do not turn off their machine. Again, the question comes up. You have a printer in your office, again, in your college, home, whatever it is. Do you have a printer? Is the printer off? Home users probably, but office, your college, do you think it's off right now? A printer takes 40 watts when it is simply kept. It takes 40 watts. So the simple thing what we have done is, we have incorporated, we have developed an AI based uh, technology which can understand and predict whether a machine is being used or not. So what we basically do is, if you have 1000 employees or 1000 students in a college or an, or an organization, if we make something which is hard coded, Hard code in the sense you have, uh, let's say, wait for 20 minutes and then power off your machine, or let's say you power off the machine at 5 o'clock. It doesn't work because if that has to work perfectly, or if that has to work in the most efficient manner, you would require 100 clones, or you need 100 people who are exactly the same. That does not work. What we did was, when you install the product, when you install this particular solution, instead of doing a power management initially, it studies the user for around 15 days. It starts studying the user in terms of what kind of a person he is. In AI solution, we call it character profiling. We profile each and every person. Then, on the 16th day, we mutate the algorithm, we mutate the entire code to create a power management which is suited for that particular person. So what happens is, on 16th day, if you have 1000 people, you probably would have 1000 different power profiles or 1000 different programs as such, which would save power for you. And each day, this keeps on improving itself. So what happens is, one, one and a half months down the lane, we get an efficiency of around 85 to 90%, which is pretty much very good compared to other, you know, Windows power management which gives you around 40%. So, this was the first product, the product which we had developed. And, uh, thing is, currently this product has been accepted by the government of India, by a lot of, uh, lot of companies and stuff, which obviously I cannot name right now because of certain reasons. Uh, and right now we are even going global with this. Okay? Now, 
that aside, the biggest thing is in TEDx or tech is to inspire people. Uh, I just wanted to say two, two sentences which we as a company and I myself believe a lot. The first one is, whatever happens, it happens for the good. The second one is, oh, I forgot. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Second one is, if you really want something, have anybody read the book Alchemist? I'm pretty sure you guys will recognize this. If you really want something, and I added a small bit, and if you're really, really ready to work for it, then the universe conspires to make it happen. Trust me, this is true. I can actually be a proof for that. Now I'll tell you, when I told my story, I said, fortunately I had an accident. If I did not have the accident, I would be here. I would not be here, sorry. I would not be here giving this talk. You take anything which has happened in my life. There are tragedies, hundreds of them. But every single one of them, later on, I look back and say that, hey, that was good for me. Secondly, I said about the universe conspiring. We are currently based out in Techno Park, Toronto. A company usually takes around six or seven months to enter into Techno Park. We did it in one and a half weeks. We entered Techno Park in one and a half weeks. Every single person in my life told me that, dude, you're missing out. You're wasting your big MNC job. I got an idea, by the way. They said, you're missing out. You're losing your job and you're wasting it everything. You're just wasting everything going behind this company stuff. We are one and a half years old. We are cross one throat. Whatever you say, whatever they say, if you just believe me, I just wanted this company to happen. Not only me, everything. And just one more thing I wanted to say about this company. See, uh, even though I had this entire dream and stuff, a one-man army doesn't make a company. We need the company's entire strength lies in this team. I really wanted the company to happen. There are four co-founders. Believe it or not, we four didn't know each other. I have never seen the other three in my life. Trust me, I'm not joking about this. And none of us have met each other. I met with the first guy because he was an IST best engineer in India for electronics. I heard about him from somewhere. I called him and he was interested to start a company with me. I met with another guy who was a marketing champion. He led a MNC's marketing campaign in the national level when he was studying in his college. He was such a good sales guy that when he walked out of his college, his 2007 password by the way, he had 28 lakhs in his bank account, which he made in two years from sales. I heard about him. I called him. He was interested. Then I got one more guy who was so famous that he organized four national events single-handedly. And yes, I'm actually talking single-handedly without any kind of support. I got these four guys, I called them, I got their number through, you have absolutely no idea from where, it was crazy, but I got their numbers. Called them, told them, see, I wanted to start a company, this is my plan, are you in? He said, let me think about it. Finally, on January 26, 2008, they all came down to the nearest bus stop near my home. We met for the first time, face to face, on that day. Four days later, we took the first office. Now, can anybody tell me if there is coincidence in this? I really wanted this to happen. Everybody wanted to do something. And again, all of this four, all four of us have a minimum of the minimum number of job offers we have that five. And I'm talking huge companies. They, every single one of us left it. Now, what is a coincidence factor here which would bring four different people to a common point and get this done? You think about anything. We had an idea for this particular product. And then, just two days before our inauguration, which is actually a pre-launch inauguration which we wanted to spread the word, two days before this, the great recession happened. And it was advantageous because everybody all of a sudden wanted to save money. And how better than save money by saving power? And this, two days after the inauguration happened, the next day, Financial Times, the Financial Times, it reported our company as the company which has the highest growth prospect in India during recession time. If recession would not have happened, we would never have got that. Very simple. You take any incident, any single incident which has happened, 
It will be the worst thing. Everybody when the recession happened, all my friends told me, dude, screwed. You're dead. Now what are you going to do? I said, what to do? That's fine. I went ahead and went ahead with the inauguration. Next day I got this. And that is the only reason why our company got nominated among the top 20 companies in India to watch out for in 2009. As well as the top, it was among the top 5 companies to be selected from India in the HIT Barcelona. That is, we were at the top 30 in the world. Now, every single thing, if you look at it, misfortune. That is the reason why everything has happened. You take a look at anything. Whatever is a tragedy, I right now was smiling when I said about my lost baggage. You have absolutely no idea. I lost 90,000 worth of equipment in that, including my entire life's memories in terms of 47,000 photos. My whole office documents, everything. I'm still smiling. I'm just thinking, okay, let's wait. Something good has to happen out of this. Let's wait for that. There is something good which, is, which should come out. I just don't know it now. But probably maybe sometime I'll tell you what is the good which has happened out of this. But each and every time, trust me, this has happened. And all the things which you happen, you just turn around and you see that, I didn't notice this happening. But hey, that's good. That's great. It is coincidence. But that is what the universe is doing. It's conspiring to help me achieve this. Just wanted to say this. Thank you. Thanks, sir.